waste management and um, I must compliment very good presentation on uh, how to look up at a startup. Thanks for that. Uh, I represent uh, Schneider Electric. Uh, I'm Anil Kadam and I work as a solution architect and a business development for smart energy systems. <clears throat> okay. <clears throat> um, a lot has been spoken on smart. I mean, today there's a big ambition of uh, smartness, 100 smart cities, smart buildings, and whatnot. Um, things, all this smart will work with energy. And uh, if the energy is not smart, nothing is going to work. Uh, so uh, I see a basic disconnect between the uh, energy companies and the smart city organizations or the companies who are endeavoring to go through this smart journey. Um, in uh, every city which has been nominated, uh, there is a special purpose vehicle created, uh, which is uh, um, participation of the municipality authority or the public works department and stuff like that. The electricity department for some reason is still not very well engaged inside this particular SPV. Um, Today, there are areas in Bangalore, in Tamil Nadu, in Chennai, and other major cities and metros and cosmopolitans who do not have power for four hours, five hours, or even sometimes eight hours. So if I am going through a peak crunch, if I don't have enough energy to supply to my consumers, the simplest solution in our country is load shedding. If I do load shedding and continue doing load shedding in a smart city, <laughs> do, you, do you call it a smart city? So energy should also get smart. It's, it's very, very important. And it should be part of the central command and control center managing different scenarios and use cases. I'll not be, go very, very technical. I'll just give a small difference of uh, what is smart and what is not smart. What you're seeing is a conventional grid. We are producing electricity maybe from uh, 100 years. and. Uh, uh, you have a central area which generates energy wherever there is fuel, majority is coal, off lit, there's a lot of emphasis on renewable. And we transport energy from long distances wherever it is getting generated to the point of use, say, Bangalore. So most of the energy for Bangalore comes from uh, Sharavati, which is uh, hundreds of kilometers away, and uh, it gets distributed in, to a distributed company. So that's passive. One way flow of energy, I get billed for it, I just pay my bill, and I accept all the inefficiencies of the complete value chain and just be passive. Now what's smart or a smart grid is in comparison to a conventional grid? The basic infrastructure is still the same. It's gonna, it's gonna be the same. But the first subtle difference in a smart grid is you will see bi-directional flow of energy happening and your grid should be capable of taking it. You as a consumer, be it a residential consumer or an industrial or a commercial consumer, can use your rooftop space and go for solar production, solar energy production. Your waste to energy decentralized plants can be connected to the grid. That means you use up the energy what you generate from renewable sources and the surplus energy, you will be able to pump back to the grid. So is that smartness available in the grid today? No. So can the grid take it, take this smartness? It's, it's a very, very important aspect. The next difference is you will have consumers becoming very, very intelligent. Example, instead of doing a load shedding to a consumer, can I do a real-time communication with the consumer and say, I am going through a peak crunch, I will be able to give you only half the supply of energy what you are contracted for. If you switch off your non-essential loads, I will still not load shed you, I will give you half of your energy. So it's a win-win situation. The consumer need not run a diesel generator, which is three times the cost of his uh, energy from the utility, and the utility need not buy a costly power source and give it in a subsidized way. So it's a win-win situation. So that's being smart. Now, a building was shown in the previous presentation. 
There are so many sensors. To be smart, it also needs to interact with the utility companies what it is connected to. On one side, it could be an electricity, it could be water, or it could be gas going further. Now, can I do a demand response? That means uh, active communication using the sensors within the building, you know, basis the usage and be smart. So that's, that's all about smartness. So the consumer is no more just a passive consumer, he is a prosumer. He produces and consumes at the same time. He is no more a passive consumer, he actively participates with the grid by being cognizant of the different information within his own installation. So that's about smart grid. And now comes the smart home or a smart building, the usage of it along with the utility. So that's smart. So it's the same electrical infrastructure, a lot of information point everywhere, picked up, used up in the right use case and right context as a smart grid. So it's basically to manage the supply and the demand very effectively. So that's the smart grid part of it. Now, I will stop with this slide, but of late, smart grid has been misunderstood to smart meters. Just by putting a smart meter at a commercial, industrial and residential area, the whole grid will not become smart. The smartness should be both on the supply side, that is the company which is supplying power to the util consumers and the smartness should be at the consumer end as well. And there should be a seamless integration as told by Mr. John across. And very importantly, it's an uh, evolution and we have a lot of uh, regulators or regulations in between the technology and uh, the development. So the regulatory boards should also understand the importance of this and they need to bring policy changes. Example, if somebody is willing to participate in demand response, he should be given a differential pricing. If somebody is willing to save energy or in contribute energy, he should be given a feed-in tariff. You know, he needs to be properly accounted for. So there is a lot of coordination which can come up. And definitely startups are coming up with a lot of innovative solutions as to how do I do a retrofit solution. Because if you really see this BESCOM, which has grown over 80 years or 90 years now, a lot of legacy systems. And it's highly impossible for BESCOM to throw away everything and then bring in a new technology to make it smart. Now, how do I make a distribution transformer, which was in installed 15 years back, smart, instead of throwing it and bringing a new smart grid distribution transformer? You know? How do I make those wires smart? Definitely, there's a lot of technology coming up with startups, which is really helping us. So we need to be smart from both supply side and demand side. Rest all is technology. Thank you.